I'm Rashid Kudus. I'm originally from the Philippines, but I was born and raised in Kuwait in the Middle East. So it's a very small country um, bordering Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq um, that many people have not heard of before. But then after I graduated from high school in Kuwait, I actually moved to the Philippines to start my bachelor's in business administration, uh, majoring in marketing management. So really early on when I moved to the Philippines, um, kind of the, the path was very linear in my head. Uh, maybe I wanted to join a big bank or a big company, a conglomerate, but then throughout college, my college experiences, I actually got to experience startups. And then I kind of realized, okay, maybe startups are actually the right environment for me to work in and to operate in um, the way that they're structured or the lack of structure actually um, th this kind of uh, cohesive uh, sorry this kind of unstructured environment really helps me in um, ideating and working with other people collaborating with them so right after my bachelor's uh, degree i actually went into a startup as well um, so it was a uh, hospitality e-commerce startup where I was traveling the Philippines, uh, negotiating with the top hotels and resorts, getting their rooms, and then also advertising these rooms on our platform so that other customers can buy them at a discounted rate. So this kind of uh, early e-commerce experience for me was very pivotal because then I kind of realized, okay, maybe this is a career path that I, I would want to stick with, uh, staying with startups. After e-commerce, I actually moved into a fintech firm. So it was called Gcash, which was also part of the entire Ant Financial Alibaba uh, ecosystem in Southeast Asia. So in Gcash, I was actually um, in charge of building like strategic partnerships with lending organizations, insurance companies, and also other financial technology startups within the Philippines. So this kind of really uh, immersed me into fintech even more, uh, especially because of the fact that in the Philippines, um, there are many people who are unbanked, so around 70% of the population do, do not have bank accounts, but there are actually more phones than people in the Philippines. So the company's main directive is really to provide financial access uh, and services to the people who do not have bank accounts, but do have a mobile phone. So I realized, okay, um, first realization very early on in my career was, okay, I want to stay with a startup, but also I want to do something that impacts the people around me. And FinTech was the way to go. So when the, when the pandemic started, the company actually grew like uh, exponentially. So there was 700% growth in terms of the amount of transactions that we were able to do, mostly because of the fact that COVID really drove more people to go cashless, use their phones more often um, and just generally take advantage of the services that they have on their phones. So uh, when COVID started, I kind of also realized that, okay, maybe I would also want to expand um, the environment that I operate in. So I, I started looking at different um, master's postgraduate programs within Europe and other countries as well. So it, it was a really long and lengthy uh, kind of search uh, journey for me. So it started off with some master programs in Barcelona and Madrid, uh, eventually moving to Lille in France, Antwerp, Utrecht in uh, the Netherlands, and then finally landing in Berlin with the ESMT. And I really do believe I made the right choice in choosing Berlin most uh, and the ESMT, of course, mostly because of the fact that uh, Berlin is um, continental Europe's biggest startup hub and fintech hub. So that was a natural uh, stepping point for me uh, moving into the future. So I did that application um, summertime last year. Uh, well, last last year, so 2020. And then that slated me for a departure from the Philippines in the, in the fourth quarter of 2020 as well. And uh, yeah, ever since arriving in Berlin, uh, I've been really enjoying my time here, um, getting to know more about the city, the diverse uh, people that live here uh, and in, around Germany as well, the culture, of course, and of course, uh, professionally, I've gotten myself. A, so this summer in 2021, I was in a uh, dental technology startup called Plus Dental. So it's one of Europe's biggest uh, med tech um, firms the, in terms of the funding that they've received. And then right now, um, I actually got back into fintech, uh, insuretech more specifically with Sincere. It's a Allianz and Microsoft uh, startup where they basically digitalize and innovate uh, insurance processes for 
um, insur insurance providers in emerging markets. There are very few schools that actually offer this kind of very holistic offering to their students in a way that, number one, it's placed geographically in an area that is a hot spot for talent, for startups, both in the technology space, e-commerce space, fintech space. So these are the areas I also want to be in. And second, of course, so the way that they kind of cultivate students to be very, uh, kind of grab those opportunities that are available to them, uh, enterprise more, be a very enterprising, be more entrepreneurial in spirit, I, I suppose. Of course, the third one, um, yeah, the social impact component. That's actually also a very integral part of the MIM program in itself with a social impact project. So it's basically a one to two month kind of project that every MIM student has to undergo at the final year of their postgraduate uh, program, where they basically become non, they become consultants for an NGO anywhere around the world and kind of provide that valuable insight to these NGOs in the way that they can transform their uh, operations or their organizations. Yeah, I, I definitely think there was this kind of effect that the SMT had on me to even take this whole career plan to a next level. So even very early on, even before ESMT, there was always this kind of uh, spark that, okay, I wanted to do more with my career. I wanted to uh, go out there, explore the world, uh, bring my career to even greater heights. But then also coming here, being surrounded by equally motivated people that also really helped fuel this kind of fire that uh, every student had within themselves. So the, the fact that uh, everything that you learn in class, you can also then apply into real world challenges at work or with, for example, a social impact project or consulting projects. And then the people that you also meet in, in class uh, or within the networks of ESMT, incredibly diverse, incredibly motivated. They also um, help, uh, help you in that regard. So yeah, I totally agree that it did have um, an incremental effect on my whole career. <laughs> So aside from the fact that you really have to be able to collaborate with other people. So at school, for example, you're all, you're always surrounded by like 145, 150 odd people from different uh, backgrounds, cultures, uh, experiences. So really mashing these, uh, really kind of intersecting these experiences in a way that would bring the most impact in a project that you work on or, uh, or, or anything that you do. It's also the fact that you need to be able to really think uh, in other ways. So like think, in, uh, think outside the box. Uh, it, it, might be a very, it might be a cliche, but um, whenever, whenever you take an ESMT class or any class in, in that matter, they always try to push you to go beyond the case, like read between the lines of the cases, uh, and apply your own insight and your experiences to it because there's there's no one single way to approach a problem or a challenge because there are so many different ways and then you'll get to know that as you also work together collaborate with the people the, the, the all the people that you interact with so it's really about intersecting those experiences uh, collaborating with your team and then bringing that solution to another level Based on like the history of ESMT, it's been founded by some of the biggest companies that are uh, present in uh, Germany, right? So these are DAX companies, the likes of Allianz or Lufthansa, for example. And uh, as a as a side effect of this, actually, uh, some of these companies we really have good relationships with. Um, for for example, one of the companies I work for right now, Sincere, is a startup of Allianz, and basically the people that are there are very familiar with ESMT, have worked with ESMT students before, working students, and uh, even one of the directors is from ESMT. So that actually helps quite well. So it's funny to talk about like our shared experiences of, with the professors uh, that they might have ex they might have attended the lectures of like some 10 odd years ago or whatnot. So that's one of the ways, but also 
Every single year, as the cohort and the alumni grows even bigger and more diverse, ESNT tries to get connected with even more startups that are based here in Germany and other conglomerates as well. So in, in a geographic sense, this is, I think, one of the be best benefits for it because you're in an area that has a lot going on in terms of like the startup ecosystem, the fintech ecosystem. So you, you got to be where the action happens. Um, I would say that the type of education that you would usually expect from in the Philippines is very textbook, textbook based, right? So you ba you basically get your readings, your your base, all of your learnings usually come from the lectures that are then derived from the from the textbooks themselves. Then you have a quiz or an exam, also probably derived from that same textbook or maybe um, from from the research papers that that course was uh, kind of founded upon. But basically, it's very theoretical knowledge. And then at a certain point in your four year bachelor program in the Philippines, because it's usually a four year uh, bachelor, bachelor degree, you're then expected to kind of apply it in a single internship, which could typically range from two to three months. So I think that this is not enough practical real world, like real world experiences for the students uh, that are there. So usually when they go into their very first jobs, they find that they might not be as prepared as they think they are. Um, there are many things that they have yet to develop within those first few months onboarding to a new, with a new company. So um, I think that those are one of the main kind of differences. When you come into ESMT or when you take uh, a master's degree abroad, um, it's more than just what is presented to you on paper, but you really are expected to work a lot with the people that are in your cohort. So that actually is what I think is the main selling propositions of any master program is that you are also you're also immersed with people who are very motivated and experienced um, as you. So, for example, one one example of this is that whenever you go into a class, I think there would be a minimum of three or four breakout rooms, for example, for every online session, because they really want you to immerse and talk with others, uh, apply the, your own experiences and insights on a particular problem. So this really enriches your whole learning experience. Um, but of course, your whole master's experience is what you make of it. So what you apply, what you learn from in school, you also ha have to be able to apply in other areas or facets of your life. So whether that's being part of an NGO or getting that first internship or second internship or even a career or um, anything that revolves around your actual career. I, I do believe that in the very beginning of the program, for example, it might be a bit intense. So for example, the first few months um, uh, lead, from the beginning of the program because of course you're you are expected to know or attend these foundational courses that will then set a foundation for your future uh courses once you once you specialize because by design esmt programs would require you to pick a specialization down the line so these specializations could be global digital strategy business analytics finance and investments or entrepreneurship so in the, in the very beginning you then have this entire cohort where you will most likely be attending classes with. Um, so a lot of classes, a lot of readings, assignments, uh, and by design also many of the courses are usually range from three to four weeks, sometimes even shorter depending on the design of the course or the specific topic. So uh, in the beginning, it, the workload may be high, but then it's slowly or gradually lessens as you proceed with the program. By the time that your second year starts, this is, this is, sorry, the second program year, um, many students find it that it's actually manageable to already balance their academic workload with a working student position at a company of their choice. So yeah, uh, with any program, you're expected to put the work in academically, but then afterwards, um, you find that some classes are actually spaced apart from other classes so that you do have time to do other things in between. On my application process, one of the first things that I did was to actually search kind of like the alumni community 
that also share the same background as me, so who are Filipino. So I did a search on LinkedIn, like ESMT and Philippines. So it will basically show me anyone that has a link to the Philippines, but also studied in ESMT. And basically they were only, so there are four, myself included. So there was a, <laughs> there was a previous uh, career assistant and then two former MBAs, one who graduated 10 years ago and one who graduated last uh, in 2020. So the community, I think for Filipinos is quite small. Um, and also, honestly, even for Southeast Asians, so people who come from Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, and so on, the ESMT community is quite small, but it's growing. Um, so right now, for example, I, th there is a Southeast Asian community within ESMT, and uh, they're all aware of each other. Um, but I think most of the students, the alumni network is still very strong, for example, in, in China, India, I would say, uh, other European countries like Italy, um, uh, but yeah, so the, the, the thing is, the, the program has 145 students or so, and these 145 students, they all stem from 43 different, 43, 45 other countries. So there are, would be some countries that are underrepresented, but there are also some uh, that, that are represented quite well. Like, uh, like Germany and Italy, for example. So I would say that the, the, the network is growing every year, but also ESMT is quite a, uh, quite a young and new school. Um, comparing it with other um, kind of business schools that are also in the Financial Times list, for example, of uh, top business schools, it's probably one of the youngest ones there. So it's expected also that um, the, the network isn't as big uh, or the alumni network isn't as big. I think very early on, I was very skeptical of the whole experience, uh, of course, like moving to a whole new continent alone, starting a new program, going back into studies. Uh, there were a lot of questions uh, and what ifs at the very end, like when I graduate, would I, would I be able to find a job? Where would I be? Um, and I think this is very natural. And these are questions that you always, you always have to ask yourself whenever you make a big decision like choosing a master's degree or choosing a business school that you want to attend. But I really feel like these are also some valuable like steps that you want to take if you want to go or take your career to another level. So there were so many things that I learned about myself, for example, when moving to Europe. Uh, for the very first time and for the past year so because i've been here already officially for around 12 13 months so actually living alone independently um building my own kind of support network here my own uh professional network from 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 scratch um especially in a country where i don't really speak the the main language so this is a whole new different experience for me so I think one of my main advice is for anyone considering an ESMT application or the ESMT Master's in Management program is that you really have to be uh, able to make the most after, out of your whole experience. So it isn't enough that you graduate with an ESMT degree, but once you're actually here, it's really important for you to invest some time into building these support networks, these professional relationships and networks in, uh, in, in Berlin, in Germany, or wherever you go. Um, it's also really important that you actually apply all of the learnings that you gain from uh, business school into the projects that you have. So whether these include um, your extracurricular activities, your internships or your career, uh, that is really important. Uh, as international students, of course, we always go one additional extra mile uh, being in a country where you don't speak the main language. So um, it's always really important also to think about in the future, uh, if you do want to stay here, how you're going to overcome that barrier, how um, you, you would want to go about this. But definitely it's been an, quite an experience for me, uh, living and moving into Europe, a uh, whole new experience, it's a whole new continent, living independently, uh, building these networks and uh, professional relationships. Um, yeah, I, I think I would definitely do it all over again if I had the chance uh, to do so. Uh, it's been a really good kind of opportunity for me. It's, I believe it was a right step and decision as well. Uh, in the beginning, I had a lot of doubts. And of course, I asked myself, um, 
all of these questions, whether I would be able to actually achieve the outcomes that I wanted in the beginning. But it's all part of, the, of that experience because once you're actually here, you gain all of these, you, you gain all of the answers to the questions that you ask yourselves in the beginning. And then it becomes all that more, all the more clear as you go throughout the program. So yeah, I, I definitely thought about, for example, all the experiences of the previous alumni as a, as a benchmark or as a baseline for my own experiences. And uh, with the SMT, for example, um, many of the alumni uh, quite liked the whole experience and uh, where their careers actually headed after the, the program. So I felt like I was reassured with that and I'm quite happy.